Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Mystery Dungeon. I won't look- No, it's not Mystery Dungeon, it's Blade Mystery Chronicle. Mystery Chronicle, I won't look back until I win. This game isn't very import friendly, which is why I actually haven't had been able to put that much time into it. It's surprisingly difficult. I mean, I mean, it's an RPG, sure, so you might expect some sort of language barrier, but this is actually very difficult to get your head around when you don't have an understanding of the language. I do have the app on my tablet, the official Google Translate app, which lets me translate text directly off the screen, but... Oh, man, that's a pain in the ass to use in this game, and I'll tell you why. So, as we can see, we've got plenty of menu options here, but I think the first thing we're going to do... I pressed X instead of circle, I need to get used to that. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to try to have a look around, but as we can see, all the menu options are in Japanese. Thankfully, you can remap controls, and you do have a full set dialogue control thing there, and a bunch of options that would make a lot more sense to me if I had my tablet right now. We can also come here to resume a saved game, or well, something. I really don't know what half of this is. I think there's like a score. Yeah, this is a scoreboard by the looks of things, with the five classes that I have unlocked. But we're just going to go and see if we can get a new game started up. There is some other set of mechanics that I should talk about while I've got the chance to talk about them. If this will go away. Don't even know where this is going. I, I can't remember my way around half these menus because it's just sometimes it's just really annoying too. We'll just back out. It's a really, really annoying menu system, honestly. It feels like that. Yeah, I would have a lot easier time getting through half these menus if <laughs> if I actually knew the language, wouldn't I? But anyway, here we are in the new game screen, and this is One Way Heroics, basically. If you've never heard of One Way Heroics, One Way Heroics was a roguelike released on PC back a couple of years ago, and it was actually recently really cheap in the recent Steam sale. And the idea of it is, the world is constantly being swallowed from the left side, and you have to make your way across to the right side and destroy the angel that's doing it. We have a bunch of things that we can go do before we set off. Including... I'm pretty sure I just went into that third menu again. Including changing our character class, our perks, and we also have a dimensional vault, which can hold... Well, it's not a dimensional vault. I can't remember its exact name, but it's a vault, basically that can hold items in between our deaths, so we can be co constantly transferring items across to each other. And we've also... Go away. We've also got... points that we earn after every... after every time we die. Come on, go down please. There. We've also got points that we earn after every time we die. And we can use these points to unlock new things in the game. For example, we can use them to unlock... Yeah, this is a different set of character classes. They all do different things and have different special abilities, but I'm going to stick with the Paladin. Whoops. And we can also go and customize the perks. As you can see here, there's just a ton of Japanese text that needs to be translated, and it's infuriating just how much text you need to translate throughout this game. I mean, sure, I can understand why, but... Jesus Christ. God almighty, it's just ridiculous amounts of text that you need to go and translate. So yeah, as we can see here, there's a bunch of different things that we can buy using these points. And at the end of every game, whether whether we die or succeed, we get the, some of these points and we can use these points to buy new stuff for the game. It's that simple, really. And it's actually a re Yeah, see, we even got classes that we can buy here. And it's actually a really cool system. And it was cool back in One Way Heroics as well, because I actually played a fair amount of One Way Heroics. And... You constantly have a sense of progression, because you're constantly earning points towards the... next part of the game. And you're constantly swapping your items back and forth. And you've even got these special worlds here that actually have different effects on... your... character, different effects on the enemies, Yada 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 yada. You can even press triangle to refresh and they'll get a new batch of them from the internet, which is a really cool thing if you ask me. I really wish they'd bring this game out in the West because I would love to be able to read all of this. But anyway, 
we are just going to hit OK and we're going to be immediately thrown into the world. And by immediately, I mean we're going to have to wait a minute because it's going to try and tell us a little bit of story, but trust me, trying to translate this is painful and it's going to take a minute to generate the world, so we're just going to have to sit here and wait for it. There is a story going on which the original One Way Heroics didn't actually have much of, which is a little bit weird, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not even going to try to understand it. I'm just going to say, shit be wacky yo. That's a joke stolen wholesale from Dragon Ball Z The Bridge series. But anyway, every time you spawn and you talk to this king, and you see that text that shows up in the middle window there? Yeah, good luck reading that, and good luck translating that. And good luck translating the text down in the bottom right as well, that's a log. It tells you some stuff that's happened over the... It, it, it's your log, your combat log, basically. It tells you stuff. And now we've got this fairy who's annoyed with us, but we'll just ignore what she has to say, because it's usually story-based. <laughs> The guys with stars above their heads tend to have something interesting to say. Although... Yeah, we've also got a... The lady here lets us take stuff out from our dimensional vault, so we get to take out a healing potion, despite the fact that we've already got three of the bloody things. So anyway, away we go, while the world is being swallowed up from behind us. I kind of miss... I don't mean this in a way that makes me look like an asshole, but I kind of miss how... In the original One Way Heroics, characters would scream if they were on screen and being swallowed up by the Dimensional Void over on the left there. And it just, it doesn't make that much sense not to have it, so I don't know why it's not there anymore. But anyway, we're just wandering around here. But we've also got other obstacles that actually take us a lot of time and some strength and some energy to move over. So, we need to plan our routes through the world carefully, and we've also got enemies to defeat. The game is turn-based, so as you're moving around, the enemies will move with you. If you attack, the enemies will attack with you. And also, if you hold R, you can use you can use this little fancy thing here to attack in any specific direction. So if you've got an enemy to the di diagonally top right or bottom right of you, you'll be able to attack them in that direction, which, trust me, in a game like this is very, very useful, and you do not want to forget that's there. But anyway, we're just wandering along in the world. There's not much that we can actually do at this point in the game. There are an amount of days that we can go along for, and we do have things we need to take care of. As you can see up there, we've got strength, energy, and HP. HP is obvious. Strength is your MP, basically. You use your special abilities, which are on... Which screen are they on? This, Yeah, this one. And as you can see, they are also... <laughs> Stuff that you need to go either translating or just using until you figured out how to actually use them. And it's... Yeah, it's a pain. There are so many things to translate in this game that it's not really beginner-friendly at all, honestly. But thankfully... Ow! Asshole! Yeah, at night everything gets a little bit more aggressive. But when you level up, you get the usual set of status effects. And we just picked up a bunch of crap! Unfortunately, I don't know what it is. We probably need to go get it identified at a village or something, because there are villages around here. We do have a weight limit, and we do also earn lapis, which is the game's equivalent of currency. Thankfully, the game actually does pause us if an enemy shows up, just in case we do miss them. But yeah, we do get more, more items and loot as time goes on, and it helps us more and more with the... Oh, hello. Can I help? W what do you do? Uh, you give me energy and HP back for Lapis. So I think I'll spend some Lapis and get my energy back. Because if your energy hits zero, your health slowly starts draining. So it's resource management just like any other roguelike. Except that it's got a lot of really clever ideas. Along with, you know, just ha g generally being a roguelike. Which is, you know, somewhat interesting in the base mechanics. Being constantly forced to move forward is actually a lot more interesting than you might give a credit for. Because... You need to be constantly moving and keeping you out of the way and preparing for the battle that's about to come up. And with the Dimensional Vault and all other all other sort of things that you can go and do in order to improve your character and improve your chances in the world. Hello, what do you do? I'll, you talk a lot of something and I really don't know. But anyway, 
We're gonna have to move through these trees and just move along slowly. If there was a map in the area, that'd be really nice. I'd like to be able to, you know, go and, you know, discover some villages. But there are also these dungeons here, which I'm gonna waste a total amount, of, a huge amount of time just trying to get into. Because these enemies are usually worth a fair amount of XP to fight, so it's worth seeking them out if you've got the time to. Well, I got so Oh. I already got that. Alright, let's make our way out. We can also use X and Circle. What was it? Was it just X? It was just X. We can also use X to do major sprints, but that actually increases the time flow for all enemies as well. So let's actually... Oh, hello. I don't know what you're talking to me about, but let's just, let's just ignore you. I'm probably going to get screwed at some point because I refuse to talk to that girl and translate what she says. But anyway, we've got a lot of stuff here. Like, we've got this chest here that if we invoke it, it'll actually give us a healing herb. And we can use that healing herb and we'll get a little bit of extra energy and a little bit of extra HP. Nothing fantastic. I just hit level 5, so I get a bunch more stuff. And I just passed the 100km mark. I'm actually doing pretty well this run. We're being told that 400 kilometers probably has the major demon guy that we need to kill. Generally a good idea to be looking around for towns as well, because there is a lot of junk that you'll be carrying that you'll need to eventually sell. I hope- I wish I could identify half of this crap, but I just- I can't, but- Ooh! Oh, I'm not gonna make that, we'll just move away. If I hold X and circle, I can wait. I don't want the camera to be too far ahead, because the last thing I want is to be engaged by enemies I can't see, but then I immediately go and just, you know, run to the right edge of the screen anyway, that's annoying. We can also list our conditions here. So... Being a fan of the original One Way Heroics, that game was fantastic because you constantly had this idea of moving forward. You, you were always collecting more stuff and that stuff was helping you to progress. You were always getting more stuff through the in-game store at the end of every run. And you also have a bunch of things like advisors helping you out. And I'd be having a lot more fun if this game was in English because... Translating all this stuff, it takes an infuriatingly long time. It's just insane amounts of time to translate all this. I mean, sure, it starts making sense after a while, but at the same time, it just takes ages to translate everything here. I mean, sure, some of it's obvious, like this. Lots more energy, because yay. It's just... There's an amazing amount of stuff that you need to get translated. I can't even see what's going on. There's an amazing amount of stru stuff that needs to be translated. And, yeah, good luck getting it all translated, guys, because it's just... There is just so much here. I just... I pray to God this game comes out in... Good old English, because... I would love to see it come out in English, because... It's a great concept, and it's actually a ton of fun to play once you get your head around it. Oh god, I'm actually full up on the weight limit. Yep, it wants me to grab that rock, which is actually pretty useless to me, so I want to actually grab this. But... I need to throw down something else in exchange for it. And I don't like the idea of throwing down anything that I have right now. Oh, this, this won't be fun, will it? I think I'll use a couple of these. Okay, so I've freed that up, and... Oh, this is a map, I think! Well, that should have worked. I don't think it did, though. Usually when you use a map, it shows towns that are around you, towns and settlements. There might be one up ahead, but... Oh, God, why? That, that was a trap, wasn't it? God damn it. And there are a lot of different classes, and a lot of things just to play as, and it's... It's, it's a really fun game when you know what the hell you're doing. Which is, you know, pretty much... Pretty much describes every game ever. But this game's got a real sense of charm to it. And this basically being a remake of the previous game, which was One Way Heroics. Even though it's not really that much of a remake and more of a remaster, I don't even know if it includes the content from One Way Heroics Plus, which was the, um... Oh, game saving. I'm actually doing quite well. 
I don't know if it's got the content for One of Way Heroics Plus, which is the upcoming expansion to the original game. Although, I, I can't imagine that it does, but... Still, either way, this is still a really fun game. Oh, hello! Hi! Uh, can I sell crap to you? Can I identify crap? Let's find out. I can... Buy what appears to be healing items. You know, I'll sell that just for the extra Lapis, because... Lapis in this game is actually pretty useful. Especially... Oh, right, I have to confirm the sale. Confirm it by the star button? Or was it the triangle button? Triangle button. Bloody hell, being attacked by a dog. <laughs> Still being yelled at by the... Ow. Ow. Ow! Go away. Sure, it's a little boring to play a rogue like in, in front of a camera because you really don't know what's coming next, so you can't really even... Armor. That might actually be useful. But yeah, as we can see here, we're just going to cross some dangerous terrain. Use some strength and a fair amount of time to pull it off. And it looks like it's a friendly town! Yeah, sure, you're going to have 500 Lapis. Why not? You're about to Whoa. die anyway. You can also have 500 Lapis. Yeah! Yeah! What about you? Oh. That's probably not friendly. Anyway. I'm just gonna move along and let them die. Because that's all we can do, really. And all the different classes tend to introduce their own ways of getting around and... You know, dealing damage to enemies and stuff like that. There's another, there's another settlement to north of me. I might, I might go up there and have a look. And honestly, getting further in this game is an honest challenge, and it actually, it's actually quite fun to do. Again, my only problem with this whole thing being that the game is extraordinarily hard to actually. God damn it! The game is extraordinarily hard to. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be able to go in there in time, god damn it. The game is just extraordinarily hard to play sometimes when you don't have a translation of what's going on. Which can be infuriating sometimes. We'll drop that and we'll take the sword and we will drop this, whatever this is. We have five days. It's actually pretty impressive. Oh god, that guy's sealed in by the mountains. I'm not getting in there. There is probably a class that can climb over these mountains real quick. It was a it's been a long time since I played the original One Way Heroic, so I can't really remember what most of the classes were. I would recommend this game outright if it came out in English, because I'm actually I actually really enjoy my time with it. It's just stupendously like <laughs> sometimes it's stupendously annoying just being not able to understand everything as easy as you would hope to. Uh, let's... No, wrong button. Let's actually use this. Just take it straight off the ground and eat it. That's a brilliant idea, me. Ooh, map, map, map. We'll use that right away. There are probably different kinds of map and I just haven't been paying too close attention. Man, it really has been a long time since I played the original One Way Heroics. But anyway, we can talk to this lady. Hey, it's a save point. I like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and die. Thankfully the game's actually... Oh, what, what the hell am I doing? I've been playing this for about 20 minutes now, so you've seen enough of the game to know that it's actually pretty damn cool, but we'll just have to run into the barrier, get swallowed up by it, and we're done, basically. When the story dialogue ends... One of our advisors comes over and offers advice, but I'm not going to pretend to understand what that was. We unlock more stuff. I get a ranking based on how I did. A C+, which will get me 36 of the special currency needed to unlock new stuff in the vault. We can also come here and talk to a bunch of advisors who'll tell us how we're doing and give us advice on how to increase our ranks. 
And we can also post our result to Twitter if we want to, which really makes me think this would do better here than it would in Japan, mainly because a lot of people, a lot more people use Twitter in America than they do in Japan. And we can also come here and deposit another thing into the vault, mainly because... Mainly because, excuse me, of just, you know, I actually purchased a... <coughs> actually, <coughs> pardon me. I purchased a second slot for the vault, so I can even go and put in a bunch of these treasure boxes, and it'll just keep... Oh, well, I can't put that in, but I can actually just put in all this stuff and just... I can, I can bring, I can get it back on my second, on my next visit to the world, which is a, it's a really fun mechanic, because you don't have to go and lose all those, I forgot to actually set it to happen properly. So you go over there, and you go over there, and you come back over to me, because I'm going to lose you anyway. I'm going to hit this, because I believe that's the yes button. I hope it is. It was. So we're just going to come down here. Because I'm pretty sure this is the area, yeah, as we can see here, we can upgrade it at the amount of space we have in our vault. We can also come here to get more features. I have no idea what the, any of these are, so we can just buy them and we just get more, we get more boosts on our way in, as I explained earlier, and more classes, and more classes probably unlock as time goes on, because that's just the way this game works. And once we're dead... We're immediately taken back to the title screen. And by immediately, I apparently mean after several seconds. But if I remember correctly, we can come here and we can even load my save game. So we can go right back into the into the fray. But it's been 20 minutes so far with Mystery Chronicle. I won't look back until I win. Also known as the One Way Heroics remake, that which I really hope they bring out here. It's a really good game. It's just really hard to get your head around unless you know Japanese. Or you're constantly using your tablet to translate what's on the screen. Because it's just... It's a hard game to get through with zero Japanese knowledge. And I wouldn't recommend it for an import. But at the same time, the moment it comes out here in English... I would more than recommend you pick it up. So I just... I want Spike Chunsoft to just localize this like right now. Or Xseed or Atlas or Access or anyone, please. Anyway... This has been Blue Maxima, and next time we'll be going and finding a lot of colour in our world. That was a terrible way to put a hint that I'm going to be playing IOVT Colourful, but there we go. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.